Hi, my name is Oliver and in this video I'll teach you how to animate a fake 3D ring in After Effects. So for this one, we'll just be starting out with a blank canvas. The only thing I'll have from the very start is this very simple color palette and that's just to guide me through the coloring process. But uh, we'll be creating the illustration here in After Effects because that's just way simpler. If you want to support the channel, you can go down in the description and download the project file to get a better look at the keyframing and really see how everything was done. So the first thing we're going to do is create an ellipse. So we'll go up to the ellipse tool, if you don't see it here, and click and hold, and you can select it right here. Now we have to decide what sort of angle we want to see the ring from. You can see if we drag this out, if we were to hold down shift and make it a circle, we would just see the ring from the side and it wouldn't really have any dimension. So we want to make sort of an ellipse and just squash it in a bit sort of like this, that should be fine. Now we can take the pan behind tool up here and if we select the layer, we can select the anchor point, hold down command and control and it will snap to the center. Now we want to line this up. So I just have opened the align window here. You find that under window and align and we'll just center it up like this. And now what we're going to do is create a duplicate of this. So we'll just call this the ring underscore but and we'll just select it, press Command and Control D to duplicate it. This will be the ring top. And essentially we want to drag it over. So you can see that we create this dimensionality. So this will sort of be the side of the ring here. So we can drag it out as much as we'd like. And I think this is sort of fine, that sort of shows it. So we'll select both of the layers. Now we can go down here into the grid and guide options and enable the title slash action save. This way you can just see the center and we just want to roughly place the center in, in the middle of those two anchor points. So that's right around here. And now you can see we sort of have this ring, this outline of the ring. Uh, there's just one minor problem and that is, uh, you can see up here, it sort of goes down because there's not really anything connecting it here in the center. Now the way we're going to create that is by making a rectangle. Now the way we're going to create that is by creating a rectangle that goes all the way down. But before we do that, we need to create some rulers so we can see where we have to create that rectangle. So we press Command and Control R to get the rulers. We can select one of the rings so we can see that middle point. And we simply just drag it in like this. Select the other ring and also drag it in right there. And this is really up to personal preference, but you can also take a ruler down like this. And if we zoom in, we can just make sure that it's right on as it should be. So right around there, it should be fine. And then we can also create it here at the bottom. So we just make sure that the rectangle will be fitted properly. So that is essentially the rectangle we're going to create. So we'll just click out of this, go up. And here we have the ellipse tool, but we'll just click and hold to select the rectangle tool. Just zoom out so we make sure that we can see the entire ring and just click and drag and it should really snap to those sort of guides or those sort of rulers. And if we just take the rulers away again, we can see that the rectangle fits. And right now this looks pretty strange. And the reasoning behind this is that it's just outlines and it's quite hard to see the actual ring because we have no colors. So the top of the ring should have this very golden color. So we can select it, go into the fill, and here we just select the eyedropper tool just to select that golden color and basically just turn off the stroke. Then the rectangle should have that same color just like that, turn off the stroke. And the bottom of the ring should just have a bit darker of a color because it's sort of in the shadow. So we can select a bit darker of a color, click OK, again, turn off the stroke. And now essentially we need to take the layers and cut out certain parts so it looks like a ring and not just this sort of ellipse or circle. So we'll start with the ring top. We'll go to effects and presets and search for the set matte effect. Drag that onto the layer. And now we have to imagine that we want this bottom ring part to make a cut into the top part of the ring. And that way we just get this thin sort of border. So we'll go to the ring top. And here we just select the ring butt. And right now you can see it's sort of inverted. 
And that part that we initially want is being cut out. So we can just invert the mat. And you can see we just have that sort of thin part of the ring. Now we can go ahead and copy the set mat effect, paste it onto the ring bottom. And here we just want to select the ring top. So that way you can see that we have the ring here. This is the front part, this is the bottom part. And now we just need to cut out the sort of rectangle in the center. So if we go into the rectangle, we'll just apply the set mat effect. For the first one, we just want it to be the ring top and we want to invert it. So that way it's just being cut out here. And then we want to apply another set mat effect. This should be the ring butt. And right here we want to invert it as well. So now you can see that it's not visible, but we'll be able to use it when it's sort of rotating. And you can also see at the top here, we just have this flat top, which looks a lot nicer. So now we want to select the ring top and the ring butt, press S as in scale and add a keyframe. And here we just want to unlock the constraint proportions so we can just adjust the X scale by itself. Then we go to the four second mark in this example and we just want to set the scale to negative 100. So you can see it sort of flips. And if we go through the animation, you can see it gets to the center and this is where it starts to look weird because it repeats that sort of same animation but there's an easy fix for this. We just go to the two second mark and here we just want to flip both of the layers. So we have already animated the scale, so we cannot use that to flip the layers. So therefore we'll create a new null object. We'll go to layer, new, null object. And right here, we just want to take the ring top and the ring butt and parent them to the null object. And we'll just call this flip. So right before this frame, just go one frame before that. We'll press S as in scale, add a keyframe and unlock the constraint portions. And then when it's right in the center, we just want to set this to negative 100 so it flips. And that way you can see the animation sort of repeats in the other direction. So this is just an easy way to sort of fake that flip without making it too complicated. And therefore you can just see we have this very simple animation. Now we can take the keyframes here select them and press F9, go into the graph editor. And here I'm just working with the value graph, but actually we can just choose the speed graph. It's easier to get an overview here. I just want to add a bit of easing at the start, a bit of easing at the end. And we just have to make sure it sort of lines up here at the two second mark. So we still have that neat rotation. And if we play that back, you can just see that it speeds up towards the center and then goes in the other direction. Now, if you wanted to make a loop of this, you essentially could go to composition, composition settings, and just increase the duration from four to eight seconds. And right now you would select all of the layers, just drag them out so they are the entire duration of the composition. Go to that eight second mark, and we can just copy these first keyframes and paste them. And then we also have to make sure that we're pasting the flip properly, so that's at six seconds. Go one frame before, Copy that last keyframe and paste it. Copy that first keyframe, put one keyframe ahead, and then it's flipped. And that way you can just see that if we play it all the way back, we just have this looping animation because it essentially gets back to the starting point of the animation. Now let's create some reflections. We'll go up to the rectangle tool here. Make sure that the fill is set to something brighter. So in the case of this front part of the ring, I have this brighter color that I'll use as the reflections. Then I'll drag out a rectangle. It doesn't have to be that thick really. Just something like this. Just line it up here in the center. If I open up the rectangle and go into the transform, I can take the rotation and just skew it a little bit like this and that just makes it look a bit more interesting. So now I can take that rectangle, copy it and paste it into the contents. Just drag it down a tiny bit. And then I can adjust this sort of scale by going into the path, turning off the constraint proportions, and just adjusting the sort of Y scale. So something like this. Then I can take the two rectangles, copy them and paste them again. Drag them a bit further down. And here you can just adjust them as much as you'd really like. You just want to do a bit of scaling adjustments to both of the rectangles just really quickly, but I, I think you sort of get the point. You just have to mess around with it for a bit. 
And that way we sort of have the reflections right here. So what we're going to do now is just rename this reflections. Then we'll take the set matte effect, drag it onto the layer. And here we have to imagine that we want it to be matted out to the sort of front part here of the ring. So therefore we go into the take matte from layer and select the ring top. So you can see it's matted out to that part, but then we also want it to be excluded from the back part here. So we can duplicate the set matte effect, select the ring bottom, and then set it to invert matte. So that way you can see it's only matted out to that part of the ring. Now there's just one minor problem. When we get to the sensor here, the sort of shine or the reflection disappears, but we'll fix that in a bit. First, we have to animate it. So we'll go to the very start, select the reflections and press P as in position. Here we just right click and separate the dimensions. So we only work with the Y position. Then we can start out by dragging it up. So we just have the reflections here on top. Then we can go all the way to the four second mark and drag it down so we have these reflections on the bottom here. So that way, when we scrub through it, you can just see that the reflections sort of run down on the ring. And then at the very end over here, we just want to copy the first keyframe and paste it so it returns to normal and we just get this loop. So now we can select all three keyframes, press F9 to ease them, go into the graph editor and we just want to sort of replicate the easing that we did with the ring itself. So nothing too fancy, just quite simple. Just try to line it up with the two second mark and the six second mark, because that's really where we sort of had the easing for the ring. So now we take the reflections and duplicate them. And this will be the reflections for the rectangle. And here we just want to delete the set mats and start over. We'll apply the set mat effect. And here we will select the rectangle. So it fits to the rectangle here. And then as you can see, it, it doesn't disappear when we hit the sensor here. And therefore we just want to duplicate the effect. And then we want to select the ring bottom and set it to invert mat. And that way we only have it when it's in the sensor here. So that's quite simple and we can take a preview. And as you can see, we have that very simple reflection. Now to replicate the reflections on the back, we just have to select the reflection layers, press command and control D to duplicate them, place them underneath. Then we just have to select the color or the fill and just select something that isn't that bright. So it fits more with the sort of back of the ring. Now we have to go in and adjust the set matte effects. So we'll start with the regular reflection first. Here we'll just have to reverse the two set mats. So this should be inverted and this shouldn't be inverted. And that way you can just see it fits with the back of the ring instead. Then we go to the rectangle. Then we find here where we have chosen the ring butt and we just select the ring top instead. And that way when we play it, it should be on the other side of the ring. But right now it looks pretty odd because they're moving in the same direction. But we can fix that by selecting the two layers and pressing U to see the keyframes. Then we can just delete these two last keyframes and just reverse these keyframes. So it's going in the opposite direction. So you can see it's going up instead of down. And then we just have to copy the first keyframes and paste them at the very end of the composition. So that way we can select every single keyframe, go into the graph editor, and here we just want to press F9 to ease it. And we just want to adjust the easing so it's roughly the same as the other one. Now, as a very last touch, we can add a bit of glow. So we'll go to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer, and here we'll just call it the Glow. Go to Effects and Presets and just search for the Glow effect. And drag that onto the Adjustment Layer. And as you can see, it's already reacting. And we just have to adjust the settings a bit. So maybe increase the threshold a bit. Also increase the glow radius and maybe put the intensity down just a tiny bit. And really, I think you get the point, but, but you just have to sort of mess around with the settings here, sort of get the result that you're looking for. And if you zoom out, we can just see that this is with, this is without, and it just makes the ring pop a bit more. And here at the very end, you can just see that the sort of back reflection appears on top of the top ring. So you can initially just take that and place it just underneath the rectangle here. So you get the desired result. 
So that's all for this video. I hope that you learned something new and that you can use these fake 3D techniques in some of your other work. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like, post a comment down below and tell me if you have any questions for this tutorial or if you have any suggestions for future tutorials. If you create anything from this, make sure to share it with me on Instagram at Olio Randolph and make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to get notified when I upload future videos. That's all for now, till next time.